So as we look at tonight's subject, uh, you could say Revelation's glorious rapture. Well, you know, the word rapture is actually not in the Bible, but um, many uh, Christians use that to refer to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to discover then that tonight um, the rapture is really a teaching, the second coming of Jesus, um, taught in the Bible more than any other subject. In fact, one verse out of every 11 in the New Testament speaks about the soon return of Jesus Christ. And um, 2,500 texts in the entire Bible speak on the second coming of Jesus. So this is wonderful. Um, although, like I said, the term rapture doesn't appear, we're going to discover it's all about the second coming of Jesus. Uh, this earth-shaking event is the ultimate Bible prophecy and it is more evident in the book of Revelation than any other book in the New Testament. In fact, in all the other books of the Bible. So to study Revelation is to actually become aware of Jesus soon return. And uh, the fact that he wants to take all those who are ready and they're called the saints, not because they are perfect, but because they are saved by Jesus Christ. Their sins are washed in his blood. Uh, no wonder Satan doesn't want us to understand the book of Revelation. You see, uh, Jesus' first birth, although it was foretold in the Old Testament, and there were so many prophecies about that, that he would come as a babe in Bethlehem. And yet so many people were surprised and unprepared. And this was in spite of all the hundreds of prophecies that foretold how he would come uh, when he was coming, the book of Daniel, uh, even the city that he would be born in, Bethlehem of Ephrata, that he would be born in a manger, um, his name, so many prophecies about Jesus, hundreds and hundreds of them with detailed accuracy. And yet so many people missed the first coming of Jesus. Why? They had not studied the prophecies of Jesus' first coming. And sadly, uh, the Bible tells us many will not be ready for the second coming of Jesus for the same reason. They have not studied the prophecies of Jesus soon return in power and great glory. And so that's why the book of Revelation is primarily written for us. And so when we look at it, uh, people are mistaken about how Jesus will come because, again, they have not understood Bible prophecy and the plain teachings in the word of God about how Jesus will appear. And so it's important for us to recognize, friends, that Jesus told us in Matthew 24, as you study that, he was asked three questions. When will your coming be? How will it be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of course, Jesus answers those three questions in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25. But three times in Matthew 24, Jesus says, take heed that no one deceives you. Why? Because the devil will be deceiving so many God's word to heed the word, to read the word, and to believe the word. And that's why we are actually doing the seminar here. And so Jesus warned that false Christ and false prophets will arise to deceive many. And how will that deception take place? Through false prophets speaking and twisting God's word. And that would be accompanied with great signs and wonders. And so as we look at our first question for tonight, Jesus Christ's glorious return. How did the angels refer to Jesus' return? Now, the, these are the angels that were on the Mount of Olives with the disciples um, that watched Jesus ascend into heaven after his resurrection. Of course, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 that Jesus spent 40 days on the earth after he was resurrected. And then he took a small group of disciples to the Mount of Olives and ascended from there. And listen to what the angels, there were two angels that remained behind with the disciples that watched Jesus ascend into heaven with the angels that ascended with him. Listen what the angel said to the disciples. And it's very important for us to understand this because this describes how Jesus will return. 
So here we have it, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Now, when he had spoken these things, that's Jesus, he had given them his last message before he left into heaven. We find that last message actually in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. He says, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations and teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded you and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he promised them, and lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. And so after he had spoken these things, while the disciples watched, notice what else took place here. He, Jesus, was taken up and a cloud, that's a cloud of angels, received him out of the sight. And notice the two angels remained. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as Jesus went up, behold, two men, these are angels, uh, stood, they were in the appearance of men, but these are none, but nothing less but angels. Uh, notice what the angel said, behold, two men stood by, stood by them in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven, notice what they said, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So this is very important to remember this year, that Jesus was taken up into heaven by a cloud, a cloud of angels. And um, the two angels remained with him said, he will come back in the same way. In other words, he will come back with angels in bodily form. So they saw him depart. It was a visible ascension. And nonetheless, when Jesus returns, it will be a visible descension. Uh, he left in a, a glorified body. He will return in a glorified body. Very important to understand this. So does Revelation then say how Jesus will return. This is beautiful, and you're going to love the study here. How will Jesus return? Does the book of Revelation say so? Very, very emphatically it does. Notice here in Revelation 1 verse 7. Behold, he, that is Jesus, is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. So Revelation's glorious rapture, the return of Jesus in power and great glory, to gather his people from this earth is the grand theme of the Bible. And so as we look at this year, every eye will see. Now we're going to discover how, who is this year? Well, what are these clouds to begin with? It says he will come with clouds. Notice here, this is now, of course, it is a figurative language. It is a symbol. What are clouds symbol of in the Bible? Notice here in Psalm. 104 verses 3 speaking of god it says who makes the clouds his chariot who walks on the wings of the wind so here we find that clouds can also resemble chariots remember elijah was taken in a chariot in the clouds well what do these clouds re resemble notice here matthew 25 verse 31 when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. So the clouds resemble or are symbols of angels when Jesus will come the second time. Well, who will see Jesus when he comes? Isn't that the all-important question? Notice what it goes on to say in Revelation again. Revelation 1 verse 7, Behold, he's coming with clouds. Clouds of angels, and every eye will see him. This is too plain to be misunderstood. Everyone living on earth will see Jesus at his return. This includes both the saved and the unsaved. Matthew 24 verse 30 says, All the tribes of the earth shall mourn at his appearing. So there'll be two groups that are alive when Jesus comes. Those who are saved and those who are lost. And both groups will see them, but we're going to see there will also be a special group that will be resurrected. So will the angels assist Jesus in his return? Notice the answer here in Matthew 24, verses 31. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, that means the four directions of the compass, 
from one end of heaven to the other. So from the north to the south, from the east to the west, wherever people are alive, they will be gathered together. But we will discover there is going to be a resurrection. There are going to be the resurrection of those who are saved. They come up when Jesus comes. There will be a resurrection of the lost. We will study that another time when we look at the thousand years in heaven. Christ's glorious return teaches us that there is no secret rapture. Because today, many Christians, well-meaning though they might be, believe that there will be a secret rapture, that someone will be just whisked away um, and taken to heaven. And uh, those who remain will be the ones to deal with the Antichrist power. There is nothing like that taught in the Bible. And we will look at this more deeply as we go into our studies. And so we find, friends, that when Jesus returns, it will be very visible, it will be audible, and important things are going to take place that the devil cannot counterfeit. So right now, people believe that there's a secret rapture, and they use biblical text for that in Matthew chapter 24, uh, verses 36 onwards. Uh, it says, one will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two will be in bed, one will be taken, one will be left. Uh, Friends, that is not talking about the manner of Jesus coming, but rather it's talking about that some will be ready and some will not. But notice Jesus coming here in Matthew 24, verse 27. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So I'm sure we have all seen lightning on a terrible stormy day and sometimes you don't even need to be outside you can be in your room with your curtains closed windows closed and when that lightning flashes there's no denying it you see that bright light streaking through the clouds so friends notice there is nothing secret or quiet about the coming of jesus because it says as lightning flashes from the east to the west so also will the coming of the son of man be in fact, the book of Jeremiah 25, verses 30 to 33, tells us a lot more about that. But notice 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16. This the Apostle Paul tells us what happens when Jesus will come. Not only will all those who are alive see him coming as lightning flashes from the east to the west, but notice what it says here in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. So not only will there be lightning, so visible, but there will be this loud trumpet-like shout and the voice of an archangel. And notice what will happen when the voice of the archangel, who is none other than Jesus Christ, calls the righteous dead in Christ from the graves. Notice what it says here. And with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. So when Jesus comes, the first thing that happens is every eye will see him, those who are alive. The next thing that happens is there are those who have died in Christ from the time of Adam up until the time Jesus comes. They have believed in Jesus. They died in Christ. Revelation chapter 14 verses 13 says, Blessed are they who die in the Lord, for from henceforth they rest from their labors. And then verse 14 says that Jesus will come with clouds and he will reap those who are ready. And so here is the thing. The devil cannot counterfeit the resurrection of the dead in Christ. In fact, the devil cannot counterfeit the coming of Christ at all. So what will happen to all the righteous at the second coming? This is very important. We will look at, first of all, the righteous who are alive now, because we've just looked at the one where the righteous in Christ are raised from the dead. But 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 53 actually addresses both. Those who are alive and are saved when Jesus comes. Those who are dead in Christ and are resurrected. Notice what this text says. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. So we looked at 1 Thessalonians already. It told us there that the trumpet of God will sound when Jesus comes and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16. So here Paul, who's also writes 
First and second Corinthians tells us, listen, behold, when Jesus comes, those who are alive and ready to meet Jesus will be changed. In other words, their mortal bodies will be changed into immortal bodies when the trumpet of God will sound. Notice here what will happen. For the trumpet will sound and the dead, that's the dead in Christ, as we looked there in 1 Corinthians 4, 16, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. In other words, they now have immortal bodies and we shall be changed. Isn't that beautiful here? 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 again. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's going to be a glorious reunion for those who have lost their loved ones who have died in Christ too. And those who are alive to see those of their loved ones come out of the grave. They come out with immortal bodies glorified bodies and they are caught up into the air with Jesus and the righteous living are also caught up after them into the air. Notice what it goes on to say here in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. Then we who are alive. So clearly the righteous who have died in Christ are resurrected and they rise first. The next thing happens, those who are alive and remain, that's unto the coming of the Lord, shall be caught up together with them, those who have been resurrected in Christ. And what happens now? They meet Jesus and the angels who have come with him in the air. So again, Satan cannot counterfeit this year. So we're going to see Jesus come in the clouds. He does not touch this earth. He resurrects the dead in Christ and the Righteous living are changed and transformed into immortal bodies and they are caught up in the air. And so this is a glorious truth. And they meet the Lord in the air and thus they will be with the Lord forevermore. And so graves open from all over the world, north, south, east and west. Some come out of the sea where they were buried. Some come out of tombs. Some come out of graveyards. Some come out of places where their bodies have been in ash. Some come out of wherever they died in war and were never, ever even buried. But God knows those who are his and he will resurrect them. You'll notice I'm not asking you to read tonight because we're going to cover a lot of material. So I'm just going to like zoom through these and you can go through it after the recording is sent through to you. Next question now. What kind of bodies will the redeemed saints have? Very, very important. In other words, those who are resurrected from the grave, those who died in Christ, we just read in First Thessalonians 4, verse 16, and First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 onwards. Notice what Philippians 3, verse 20 tells us here. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly await the Savior, the Lord Jesus. That is the second return of Jesus. Philippians 3, 21, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed changed to his glorious body isn't this good news how many of you think that's good news tonight i think that is the greatest news so if you die tomorrow before jesus comes if i die tomorrow before jesus comes i don't have to worry if i die in christ because when i come out of the grave when you come out of the grave you come up with a glorified body if you died of cancer you don't have cancer you come up with a perfect body full of youth and vigor, and you're ready to meet Jesus in the clouds. Notice Luke chapter 24, verses 36, 37, and 38. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, he's talking to his disciples, peace to you. But they were terrified. This was after he was resurrected. They were terrified and frightened and supposed they had seen a spirit. So the disciples were sad. Jesus had been buried in a tomb. Uh, the fondest hopes had been dashed. They were bitterly disappointed. They didn't expect Jesus to die, even though he had told them many times that he would die for the sins of the world. And so now when Jesus resurrected and he appeared to the disciples now in Luke 24, year where we are reading, they were afraid of him because they had thought they had seen a spirit or a ghost. So he said to them, notice what Jesus says to them. Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? 
Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me, he says, and see, for the spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And very clearly, Jesus tells him that, but while they still did not believe for joy and marvel, he said to them, have you any food here? So what do they do? So they gave him a honeycomb and a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in the presence again, because a spirit or a ghost would not do such a thing because they don't have flesh and blood. So this is very important to understand. How do those who have died in Christ come out of their graves? Notice here again, friends. Men of Galilee, Acts 1, verse 10 and 11. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus was taken up from you into heaven. Will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. In other words, as they saw Jesus go with a flesh and blood in a body that he had been resurrected with, so it will be with those who come out of the graves when Jesus comes, those who have died in Christ. Does Jesus come to earth or remain in the air? Again, here is from Paul, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, that's the resurrected in Christ, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. So very clear, this tells us that Jesus will not set foot onto this earth when he comes the second time. Jesus will remain in the air, resurrect the dead in Christ, and the alive in Jesus, those who are ready to meet Jesus are caught up together with him, and they meet the Lord in the air. And so suppose that in Jerusalem, a glorious being suddenly appeared who claimed to be Christ and fit the, the description of Jesus in Revelation 1 verses 13 to 17, which we studied about four nights ago. And suppose he preached beautiful texts and sermons from the Bible, uh, truths that are in God's word and calls fire down from heaven and heals the sick and helps to stop wars. And he reads minds and blesses the children. What would be your reaction? We need to answer this question for sure. Would we believe such a person? Because the devil is going to try to counterfeit the second coming of Jesus, but he cannot counterfeit it in every particular, especially he cannot raise the dead and make them have mortal bodies. He cannot come in clouds of angels and catch up those who are alive in the air. But he will certainly try to counterfeit the coming of Christ. How will we know that such a person who comes to this earth claiming to be Christ, heals the sick, ends wars, speaks beautiful words of scripture, and um, how will we know this is a false imposter? Well, here's some, again, uh, the apostle Paul tells us, for the Lord himself will be sent from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The devil cannot counterfeit that for sure. Does Satan have power to look like Christ? Absolutely, he can try and look like Christ, but he cannot come in the manner and power of Jesus Christ. So notice here, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 14. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. So he was, remember we studied that villain of Revelation that, he was an angel of light. In fact, his name was Lucifer. And the word Lucifer, the name Lucifer actually means light bearer. So before Lucifer fell from heaven because of rebellion and disobedience and became the devil and Satan, he understands and knows what an angel of light looks like. And so he can transform himself into an angel of light. In fact, he is going to work in such marvelous powers before Jesus comes to deceive the whole world. But those of us who understand scripture and know Jesus and who understand how Jesus will come will not be deceived by deceptions. Notice Revelation 16 verses 13 and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. That's Satan. We studied that before out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. 
that we are still to study in the future. But notice, Satan will work through powers. He will work through the beast. He will work through this false prophet. Uh, we will study this in a future study. Uh, but notice what will happen. They are spirits or demons, fallen angels, performing signs, signs and wonders, which go out to the kings of the earth to deceive them. In fact, Revelation 11 verses, um, uh, Revelation 13 rather verse 11 also tells us this, that um, he will call down fire from heaven to deceive. We will look at that just now. Here's the text here, Revelation 13 verses 13, I beg your pardon. Notice again, it says here, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And so the devil is able to do that. But friends, we need to be founded on scripture so that we are not deceived by his signs and wonders as powerful as they will be. That if it were possible, according to Matthew 24 verse 24, the very elect would be deceived. Will the devil quote scripture? I want to let you know that the devil knows scripture more than probably any of us do. But the problem is, he quotes scripture to deceive people. The Bible says the devil believes and he trembles. The devil works to deceive. Notice when Jesus was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 6, as he had been anointed or baptized, when he was to begin his ministry on this earth, which lasted for three and a half literal years, the devil wanted to tempt him to believe that he was not the son of God. Jesus had gone in the wilderness and had fasted for 40 days. And notice how the devil comes to him. Matthew 4, verse 6. And he said to him, this is the devil speaking to Jesus now. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written. Now he's quoting scripture. He's quoting from the Psalms. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you. Hmm. Ezekiel 28 tells us that the devil, before he became the devil, when his name was Lucifer, he was a glorious and beautiful being. And so he can dazzle the senses of any human being on this earth here. Notice Ezekiel 28 verses 12. It says, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So the devil can come dazzling in glorious brightness and he can come as a holy angel. But you will know that he's not a holy angel when he begins to twist God's scripture and tells you things that are not in the word of God. That's why the most important thing is to know the word of God. In fact, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 4, it's also Luke chapter 4, verses 4, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, physically, but by every word that will proceed from the mouth of God. So in other words, just as you and I need to eat physically, for you and I to be strong spiritually so that the devil cannot deceive us, then we need to spend time in God's word. And that's what is the reason for this revelation seminar. So would it be safe to see, to go and see a false Christ? You know, Jesus clearly commanded us that we should not go out to see a false Christ. You know, as much as it might be exciting and intriguing, it is the most dangerous thing to go and listen to a false Christ. When we disobey a direct command of Jesus, then we place ourselves in jeopardy. We place ourselves in a difficult situation where the devil is able to deceive us if we go onto his enchanted ground. And so notice here what it says. Jesus tells us in Matthew 24 verse 23. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or there is the Christ. Do not believe it. So in other words, friends, we need to be founded on scripture. We must only stand on the word of God. Matthew 24 verse 24. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders. And what will be the whole purpose of these great signs and wonders? To deceive, if possible, even the elect. But the elect, God's people who are waiting for the return of Jesus, who have studied the book of Revelation, who have studied the Bible and know how Jesus will come. 
they will not be deceived because they believe and they have heeded or they have kept God's word. Matthew 24, verse 26. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms, that is spiritualism. Someone who's been raised from the dead, do not believe it. We will study this more deeply when we study what happens when a person dies. Don't worry about that. What will the wicked do at the time of the second coming? This is the wicked who are alive now. That question addresses the wicked who are alive. And we have the answer in Revelation 6 verse 14. Then the sky receded. This is talking about when Jesus returns. And then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. So there's a great earthquake. That happens, which is the seventh plague. Don't worry about it. We will study it there in Revelation chapter 16. We have the seven last plagues. Well, the last plague is a great earthquake that destroys all the islands and mountains. And they are moved out of their place. Their place. So what happens? The kings of the earth, these are those who lived gloriously and did not prepare for the return of Jesus. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men. Every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. And notice what they say. And they said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. And so very, very clearly, there are going to be two groups who are living when Jesus comes. The redeemed, the saved, who are happy to see Jesus because they have looked forward to his return. They are ready to meet him. But there are those who have not made the preparation. In Matthew chapter 25, they are mentioned as the five foolish virgins. There are those who have not made the preparation. They are the wicked who are alive that have not made the preparation. And they run to the rocks. Those who are alive, they look into the clouds. And they say, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. But the wicked, they can't face the glory and the brightness of Jesus and the angels and even the redeemed who have been resurrected and those who are alive and are ready to meet Jesus. So why doesn't God give the wicked another chance? Well, we will study about this more in detail. But here is a few texts. Second Thessalonians 2 verses 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed. That is the same as the beast. We will study this in detail later on. Don't worry about it. The beast of Revelation chapter 13. And we see him again in Revelation chapter 17. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. And destroy with the brightness of his coming. This text is talking when Jesus comes. The wicked will be consumed will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Notice what it goes on to say. But with righteousness he shall judge the weak. Sorry. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor. Isaiah 11 verse 4. And decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Now notice about the wicked now. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips. He shall slay the wicked. Isaiah 28 also talks about this here and also the book of Jeremiah. We will study that in another detailed uh, study. What happens to the wicked at the second coming? Well, we're still answering that question here. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, that's the wicked. Why did they perish? Here's the answer. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Well, who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. According to John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 17, verse 17 says, Jesus said, sanctify them, Father, by thy truth. Thy word is truth. So God's word is truth. And God's law is truth. Now notice 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11 and 12. And for this reason, God will send them, that's the wicked, a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. In other words, God doesn't want them, anyone to be lost. But because there's a group of people 
that would rather believe a lie than God's word and God's truth. Well, God will allow them to believe that lie, that they may all be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So God wants all to be saved. God gives us his word and God sent his son Jesus to die for our sins. God gives everyone an equal opportunity to be saved. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 says, I'm not willing that the wicked should perish, but that everyone should repent and be saved. Even the wicked God does not desire to be lost, but because they don't want to accept the grace and mercy offered to them by God in the gift of his son. They don't want to study God's word. They don't want to give up on their sinful pleasures and habits. So God says, listen, if you want that, then I'm going to leave you in your choice. God always respects our choice. Love always respects choice. Well, how much glory will be seen at the second coming of Jesus? Notice Luke 9 verse 26. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory, and notice here, and his Father's glory, and of the glory of the holy angels. And so Jesus comes in this glory, this magnificent, dazzling power of display. And friends, it is going to be a terrible time for the lost, but it is going to be the most glorious and wonderful, joyous occasion for those who have made the preparation. What will Christ and his armies do to the nations? And then again, this is to those who are lost friends. Notice here in Revelation 19 verse 11. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. Remember we studied this is one of the titles of Jesus and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Verse 15, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. This is speaking of Jesus Christ when he comes in power and great glory. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so Jesus comes those who are, are deceived by the devil, they are lost because they believe the lies of the devil. But friends, Jesus wants us to be saved. What is the main purpose of the return of Christ? Is that not an important question? That is a very important question. And the answer comes from John 14 verses 2 and 3. Jesus promised the disciples, and this is a promise to everyone who accepts Jesus, to all who are preparing for his soon return. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so here is some exciting things that we will experience when Jesus comes. There will be a reunion of loved ones friends and family that have been separated by death. Well, there will also be, sadly, those who are lost. But friends, we want to dwell on the good news. The good news that when Jesus comes, there will be some blind people who are ready to see Jesus. He will give them their sight again. There will be some deaf people uh, when Jesus comes who are alive. They will hear again. There will be some who will be in uh, wheelchairs and on crutches, some who cannot talk, some who cannot walk, they will be able to walk and talk. Isaiah 35 verses 4 and 6, you can read that in your own time. Jesus will give all those who are alive glorious bodies. And of course, there'll be no more death, no more sorrow, and no more tears of pain. Well, what does Paul call Christ's coming? Notice here, yeah, this is beautiful. If you are depressed or discouraged tonight and you want some hope, there's no greater hope than the soon return of Jesus Christ. In fact, 
The Apostle Paul calls this here in the book of Titus, Titus chapter 2, verse 13. He says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many of you think this is good news? I think this is wonderful news. It is soon to take place. Jesus is coming to take those who have made ready for his soon return. Well, can anyone know the time of Jesus' return? This is a very important question. And here the answer comes to us in Matthew 24, verses 36. But on that day and hour, no one knows. Nobody knows when Jesus is coming. Not even the angel of heaven, but my father only. Of course, at the point of time, Jesus will come. And the angel in heaven at that time will know. But friends, for you and I on this earth, Nobody knows the day or the hour. So if anyone tells you they know when Jesus is coming and they tell you he's coming in such and such a year on such and such a date, be sure those are false prophets. Those are false statements. What can we know for sure about Jesus's appearing? Here it is, Matthew 24, verses 32. It goes on to say here, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When his branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. What things? The signs that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 24. Take some time to read it at home tonight or during this week. Jesus was asked three questions, like I said, when he told the disciples that there would be a time of destruction. And he was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. In AD 70, they asked Jesus three questions. When will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And how will we know? Well, Jesus goes on to tell them in Matthew 24. He gives them many signs, rumors of war, earthquakes. There will be pestilences. There will be so many things taking place. Uh, people will be deceived by false Christ and false prophets. But Jesus tells us when you see these things happening, no, it's near. So read Matthew chapter 24 and find out what those signs are. How will people be rewarded at Jesus' second coming? Very, very important the answer. Revelation 22 verses 12. And behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is worth me to give to everyone according to his work. So friends, we are not saved by our works, but our works testify whether we are in a saving relationship with Jesus. And so there are going to be two groups, like I said, when Jesus comes of the living. Those who are alive and ready to meet Jesus and those who are lost and will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And so Jesus tells us that he will reward everyone according to his work. So it, clearly when we die, we don't go to heaven because the rewards only happen when Jesus comes. No one can receive the rewards of eternal life until Jesus comes. But of course, there will be the guarantee that Jesus gives to everyone that if we die, we will have the reward of eternal life when Jesus comes. We've studied that very clearly today, and we've looked at that. And you will be able to go through that to your, through your study guide when um, Chantel will put it on the group after this meeting is over, and you can study it out. And there's more texts. Um, there's no time I could finish this year in 45 minutes. And uh, you go through each text and see and pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to show you and to reveal God's truth. Right. What warnings did Jesus give us in the book of Revelation about his coming? What warnings did Jesus give us? Well, in Matthew, it tells us also, Matthew 24, verses 44 Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you do not expect. Of course, that is, that is for those who are lost. We who are ready, we are not going to be disappointed. I want you to know with certainty tonight that Jesus loves you. He wants you to be saved and we all can be saved by his grace. We're going to study that theme as we go deeper into the book of Revelation. Here's an important question, the last question for tonight. If Jesus should come, will you be ready? 
What we're going to study, there are still some things that will take place in the book of Revelation before Jesus comes. So Jesus will not come tomorrow in the next 24 hours. Certainly not. But friends, in a way, Jesus... die immediately no we will study that very clearly what happens when we die but when we die if we die tonight probation closes for us whatever pre preparation we should have made if we haven't made it we are lost but if we have made it and we die tonight the promise is that when jesus comes all those who have died in christ the bible says in the book of some precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, his children, because he knows each one of them and he will call them forth out of the graves when he comes. So when Jesus comes, it will be a glorious return. He comes with all the holy angels. He comes in the glory of his father and he resurrects the dead in Christ. Those who are living and ready to meet Jesus, they are caught up with the resurrected dead in Christ. And then they ascend into heaven for a thousand years. We're going, to, we're going to study what happens in the thousand years of Revelation chapter 20. Don't worry about that tonight. We will cover that topic. We will see very clearly. Between the 1,000 years at the beginning, you have the first resurrection. At the end of the thousand years, you've got the second resurrection. But friends, we need to prepare for Jesus to come. And if we should die before he comes, we must make sure that we are ready to meet Jesus at the first resurrection. And so I want to pray with you uh, that God will help us to be ready when Jesus comes. Will you bow your heads with me and pray in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you that the second coming of Jesus is the most taught doctrine in all of scripture. More than 2,500 texts. One of every 11 in the New Testament speaks about the return of Jesus. In fact, Jesus himself, his last words was, be he ready when I come. Because I'm going to prepare a place for you and help others to be ready for my soon return. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. So I pray for each one tonight who has been on this Zoom meeting. I pray for all those who will be receiving these study guides as they study. May this beautiful truth give us hope of Jesus' soon return. And may we be ready, whether in death or life, to meet Jesus in the clouds and ascend to heaven with him for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I hope you were blessed by the study tonight. To, no, I always uh, like to say <laughs> tomorrow. Because uh, I'm used to doing these in series. But next week, don't miss the devil chained in a pit. Because when Jesus comes, we're going to find out the devil is going to be cast into the bottomless pit. And so that will be our study for next week. But in the meantime, God bless you and your families. Thank you for those of you that have been giving us your prayer requests. We have been praying for you. Some have sent in some personal prayer requests. Be sure. We are praying for you during the week. And I know God is going to answer each prayer request according to his riches in glory. And so be blessed wherever you are. God bless you until we meet same time next week.